duets the first couple or three tunes. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. So thank you all for coming out to witness this. And uh, on the other piano, this is Ethan Leinwand from St. Louis. He's a master of early blues piano styles, and especially that regional style that came from St. Louis in the, in the 1920s and, and other times. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play a, a boogie, a rag, and a blues for you. Maybe, I don't know what order. What do you feel like starting with? They're all the same to me. I'm, yeah. I'm going to play each one of them exactly the same. So. <laughs> we'll start with a boogie. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's right, boogie yeah. into it. Sounds good. All right. Let's play in the key of uh... <laughs> the, the They're not all going to be in C. I no, yes. I think they said Z. Oh, Z. Uh, yeah, they're trying to. Well, I can, none of them are going to be in the key of Z. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's playing B flat. Mm -hmm. All right. Z yeah. flat. Z flat. They, they, say, <laughs> they say H in German, right? Uh, is that what they say? Yeah, there's uh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. They would. B natural is H, right? <laughs>
every day you get to play blues piano with a blues piano uh, <laughs> master, so that's a pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> That's a rare treat to get together and do this kind of stuff. It's uh, not every day, and it's awesome. <laughs> Sonny, Carl, Sonny, Leyland, not Bob. In the, in the, in the, the, the 20 fingers or, you know, it's four hands, it's, it's hard to remember that you have two hands, too, when you listen to him. You start to be like, I, I, hear, I hear all four over there. So, you know, it's, like, it's, uh, it's awesome. We're, we're going to do something now. I heard... Now this is uh, this is some I don't know, more obscure kind of stuff. We're both into the old records, so we listen to all those things now. And I thought I was pretty special that by my le you know I don't know early 30s I discovered all that was cool about uh, the Texas Barrel House tradition. And there's all great stuff from the 20 from mostly the 30s and uh, sort of this uh, real uh, ragged but but with a great low down feeling kind of stuff. <laughs> and and when I found a video of him playing as what you were in your 19, 18, 19? I think it was uh, maybe like 22 in that. A baby, a baby. And he's already <laughs> playing these pieces like as, as encore, so it's pretty awesome. So <laughs> we're going to have a thing about that. So we're going to do it's called The Cows. Mm -hmm. Now they all played, they all, 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 in Texas, uh, they all rode the Santa Fe train and they all kind of played this, this tune or a version of it. And we're going to do our own version of it, which will be whatever. Oh, that's right. right yeah. You want to you start us in? All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. The cows. All right, now remind me what's happening now. Nobby and Valerie. That's what I thought. All right. <laughs> We're going to switch pianos. Okay. We're going to do a lot of that mixing around. We're going to, you all, maybe you want to step it up. We're going to bring up my amazing wife, Valerie Kirchhoff. Yes. Yeah. We perform uh, all, all regularly over St. Louis. I came to St. Louis because she was there doing great stuff and had to, put, had to want to play along. You, have a, you know what we're going to do? Uh, let's do my man. Let's switch over here. Even though I just got to know that piano. As well, like, <laughs> we figured each other out. But, uh, but, uh, makes it feel like a whole new show now yeah, for you, Yeah, a whole new Ethan. show, yep. A whole new show. <laughs> All the work's gone. So, yeah, this is a, this is a bit of old, old St. Louis-style uh, blues. A lot of it was, was this just instrumentation, a, a female singer and a piano player. It was really where all the great low-down piano blues was happening in the 20s and 30s. So we love those old records, and we like to do our, our take on them. tell you people what my man did to me one day well let me tell you people what my man did to me one day he did all that he could to drop for me away ain't fine Yes, he's a long, tall daddy And the clothes he wears ain't fine But he's got something that he uses Always makes me change my mind trying to remember to do the St. Louis stuff that we really love doing together. So we're going to do another one right now. This is a tune that was done by St. Louis Bessie Mae Smith called Creepin' Eel Blues. Oh, see. Jimmy Johnson called something one day it looked like a snake they call an eel.
Well, all by myself in the morning. Well, all by myself at night. I sit alone with a table and a chair, playing solitaire, and I'm so lonesome there. By myself, I get so weary Watching the clock on the shelf I like to lay my weary head On somebody's shoulder How I hate to get older Older all by myself We're, we're looking to run somewhere around 7 o'clock with this set, so I'll make this the last one. Just uh, just some kind of boogie-woogie. I'm not exactly sure what it'll be yet. <laughs> but it'll be something. Play that thing just right Play that thing, oh, play that thing just right We've really got to scuffle the house rent tonight My house rent's due, gas bills run up to ten Oh, the house rent's due, gas bill run up to ten I wouldn't have no light, but a light man couldn't get in Everybody dance and have a good time. We got everything to drink from scotch whiskey to wine. Oh, forget about the landlady, give her another line.
boogie boogie bill just got down from the hill. Got a gallon of liquor straight from my liquor still. If you feel like shaking, do it off your own free will. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, all right, my friends. I really appreciate you coming here and supporting our kind of music. And uh, we'll be back in a little while. So big thanks to Rhonda and Jeff for accommodating all of us. Uh, see you in a minute. Piano player who uh, appreciate who likes the old music. It's such a uh, absolute thrill to get to hear Carl Sonny Leyland and I. Always uh, it gives you a lot to reckon with. As your, for your own playing, and it gives you a lot of inspiration. It's like everything you love, but really, when I when I hear him playing, it's the um, it's the swing and the storytelling that I think I love the most in your playing. Like it is so much artistry in it, and, and it's just a beautiful, wonderful thing. And I never tire of it. I love it so much. I don't think they tire of it either. <laughs> I'll butter him up as long as I can. I will butter this man up. So thrilled. Like I mean, I. I loved his playing long before I got to meet him and then did, you know, did for him to be such a great guy on top of it. It's just awesome. Let's see, I don't know. There's like, there's, there's so, so little time and so many tunes. I have, I have this, so this, I don't, I don't perform this stuff a lot, um, but I'm going to do it anyway because we just had Mardi Gras. So I'm going to do some New Orleans style piano, like some Tipitina. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. A little, mo little a little modern for our, um, for our vibe, but, but let's, let's, let's break the doors down on decades.
Yeah, no. Well, New Orleans mood. Oh. What's that? What's that? <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do uh, one more solo piece. Um, oh, this is a cool uh, tune. This is called the Davis Street Blues. It's by a fellow named Sugar Underwood, and you know that's a great name, Sugar Underwood. Right, and uh, he was from Jacksonville, Florida. And he went up you know, that back in the 20s, before the Depression hit. All the uh, record labels were sending mobile units all around the South to try to find. Well, the next great thing, the next great Blind Lemon Jefferson or, or whatever they could find. Once the Depression hit, that all stopped, and you had to be a superstar if you to record. But, but at this point, anyway, everyone was getting a chance, so they set up in this uh, tobacco warehouse in Savannah, Georgia, these really cool acoustics and this kind of natural reverb, so that all the records there have this, this awesome vibe. This is one of them, so it's called David Street. This is in Jackson, Mississippi. So I mean, no, I'm sorry, it's Jacksonville, Florida. That's a different song I do with Jackson. See, it's a street in Jackson, Mississippi. Gets confusing. Okay, here we go. The Davis Street Blues. All right, now I'm going to bring back Valerie Kirchhoff. Okay, yeah. In, in, yeah, it sounds great. In St. Louis, she, uh, she's known as Miss Jubilee. She's been performing. Miss Jubilee, yeah, she's been performing for quite a long time and really has helped keep uh, 
the flame of uh, early jazz and blues alive in St. Louis and where, where, where a lot of it happens. So it's a great place to do it. Uh, we're going to do, we're actually going to go back to the ragtime era to do a super early blues. The blues era and the ragtime era kind of overlap because blues got the first blues real popular song. That was the St. Louis blues in 1914. The sheet music kind of set off the craze, but the ragtime era was still kind of, was still going strong. It still had another ooh, four or five years left. <laughs> at least, at least as an era. So, like, so these tunes, they kind of sound like ragtime. They kind of sound like uh, blues, and they're really fun. So this is called um, You Could Have It, I Don't Want It. <laughs> So travel on your way Save all that explanatory stuff Move on, kid, or I will use you all I'm through most fluently enough, see enough And that's the reason I say You can have it, I don't want it I mean your love and your sympathy I mean the heart that you gave to me do um so like around also around this time as these sort of like uh well that was probably come from Tim Penn Alley's around 1917 uh, I think that was that was printed and like around that same time though there was a really active uh vaudeville uh scene in the deep south and that's where all these great black musicians were were, were really introducing blues to their audience and it's sort of where uh they fell in love with the blues so that's why when crazy blues the first you know race record came out in 1920 it sold a million copies right away because they already they already knew that, yeah, they already knew this stuff. So, so the 20 style blues really comes out of that, that Southern vaudeville circuit. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do one in that style. It's called Prescription for Blues. Now, can we go all acoustic for this? Do you mind uh, turning off the mics for all this? So yeah, this is, this is kind of how that style went.
This is just a fun old tune. Okay. Uh, this is like a 30s version of uh, You Rascal You, but female side. You stole my man. You no good rat. Well, you stole my man. Rico! 
me the whole time I just do it. Okay, well we're gonna bring back Carl Sonny Leyland and he's gonna play a little and then we're all gonna start joining forces for the for the end of it. But please welcome back the greatest Mr. Carl Sonny Leyland. to play a couple of uh, my compositions for you and I'll start out with a slower number I call this one Chestersfield not Chesterfield but Chestersfield after after one of our cats he's uh, crossed the rainbow bridge at this point but he's still in our hearts Thank you. 
thank you, Chester thanks you. <laughs> All right, another uh, Cuyama Valley inspired piece here. This is the Dance of the Tumbleweeds. <laughs> Before I got a tractor, we had a, a, an abundance of tumbleweeds, and when, when we'd get the windy weather, you could see a whole bunch of them rolling across the field, and it's kind of, kind of spooky. <laughs>
There was an album made uh, circa 1942, I think, called Eight to the Bar. Now, that was another name for Boogie Woogie. And there's uh, various folklore tales of where the name Boogie Woogie came from, and some people will argue that the music never actually was called Boogie Woogie, and that was a conjured up name based on a, what a, everybody know who John Hammond was? Uh, well, he was the guy that put on the big concert at Carnegie Hall where uh, black music was first exposed to a wider audience, jazz and blues and gospel. And uh, there's a theory that he was the one that decided that the genre should be called Boogie Woogie. Now, of course, there had been a record called Boogie Woogie, Pine Top's Boogie Woogie, in 1928, and uh, a lot of people felt Pine Top was the originator of the style. Not really true, it had existed, but he certainly was a great exponent. Should we do a Pine Top's Boogie Woogie? That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, Axel told me that, yeah. Yeah, that, mm. who knows? He certainly was a good promoter. <laughs> You feel okay about pine tops? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows pine tops, boogie boogie. Yeah. Do you want to do it in C or do you want to pick another weird key or something? Well, I'll do it in C. All right. Yeah. What about F then? Yeah. It's not that weird. I thought that weird. I was going to have brain tumor. Well, D flat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
No, that's right. No, you, you have to figure it out. I never figured out the actual riff. I was like, I should have said that. Everything looks different in that day. Yes. Yeah. Different way of getting around. <laughs> <laughs> well, what should we play now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think good, good gravy. Yeah, I've been listening. To you. He's been playing this around the house today, so I. Yeah. It's your groove on this one. Yeah. yeah this was written by a fellow called Harry Belding. It was about 
Evaporation. Yeah, yes. Yeah. What, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're on 
we're gonna do a song called Got the Blues So Bad, recorded in St. Louis by Victoria Spivey in like the later 20s. We just, yeah. uh, just in the beginning of this year, we got to record this like old school style on a, an acoustic 78 recording mm. where Ralph stuck her head in a big cone. And, <laughs> and all the horn players were just like right here, you're blown. They're right and, here. And, uh, all uh, using the same cone. It was, it was a concert we had in St. Louis with a, a fellow down in Texas named Colin Hancock, and he figured out how to, how to do this, how to do like old acoustic 78 recordings. So then after we recorded it, we were able to play it right after for like the crowd. It was, it's not, we just sound like an old record. Uh, so yeah, it was an uh, early <laughs> fun show. Yeah, yeah. cool. But this won't sound like the old record. But <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome anyway. See, see blues. All right. right. <laughs> we just kind of like, he made, made that song, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs>
you all so much. He takes, takes all the knocks and gets none of the glory. <laughs>
Thank you all so much.